Let's welcome in our co-hosts on the day today, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. Billy, good morning to good you. Good morning, Rob. Great to be here. And welcome back to Prodigal Son. We haven't seen him, uh, I think it's been a good six months or so, Anish Sampali. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are pointing at yeah. each other, but it's clearly you and each. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Rob. I'm I'm happy to be back. I know we were talking about it being six months, I think, since I've been on the show. So yeah, at least. thanks for having me. Well, it's but, great to have you back. Yeah. And look how well dressed he is. He does look good. Yeah, yeah. Not for you guys. It's it's for work. So <laughs> yeah, I didn't feel special. So <laughs> you didn't need to try to burst well, the bubble. Well, it was already burst. Well, I did, Rob. I did. I thought he came in this way just for us. Yeah. I'm gonna. Well, let's just. Pretend, Bill. It's Pretend. That, we're good at that. That Anish feels we're special. <laughs> you are special to me, guys. Just I'll throw that out there. If I have to milk the compliment, I don't want it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I'll take it. You'll take it. You, you can have that one. <laughs> our, our guests in the first segment include the owner and proprietor of this fine radio station uh, and uh, TV uh, station as well, Delegate Michael Hornby. Mr. Hornby. Good morning, gentlemen. Welcome back from Huntington. Thank you. Yes. First time there was actually... Uh, very eye-opening interim session there yes. right yeah. yeah if you haven't been in huntington for a marshall home game when the community walks to the stadium that's a pretty cool saturday if you haven't done that it's a it's a pretty impressive campus also sheriff nate Harmon is in the house good morning nate good morning good morning great to have you here as well thank you for having me so uh quick question um we understand the schools will come up with funding for three sros student uh, um, school resource officers sorry and the next question is, can you hire three SROs, Nate? Yes, we can hire three SROs. I've got, um, I got some pretty um, interested parties already, pre-certified officers that will apply direct for that spot. Mm -hmm. um, of course, i, I got to abide by civil service rules, and there's, some, there's obviously some red tape, but I'm hoping we can get through that pretty quick. We get a test coming in um, June. Uh, as early as June, and uh, we get the ball rolling on that. Sure, if we, I think we've asked this question before. What is the optimum number of SRO, SROs that you have in the county? I don't think there is a specific one, Bill. Um, I think that you have 32 schools uh, in the county, and you've got to collectively look in uh, zones in, in terms of how many schools you have. And so I'm a big advocate of, of having floating SROs. You have assigned SROs to the high schools, and, and, uh, but the floating SROs at any point in time can show up at a feeder school and, and, and do a safety check. And uh, I, I prefer it that way. So you could have three, you could have six in the northern uh, part of the county. You can have uh, four, you can have uh, eight's a little bit much, but I'd say somewhere between four and six in each part of the county, north and south, would be ideal. Now, the SROs would be dedicated to the schools, or they would not be moving in and out of your regular deputy force, or would they? Um no, they wouldn't be. They, they would uh, probably do some civil processes for us uh, when school's out. Okay. Um, generally, they tend to schedule vacations when school's out, though. So they have a, a, a legitimate set schedule. We try not to interrupt that as much as possible because they are super busy throughout the school year. They're socializing yeah. with the kids. They're doing presentations. Uh, the SROs now are actively visiting all the schools in their area, not just the you know stationed yeah. at high school. So they're pretty busy. That's so my point. I don't think I phrased it very well. The SROs are not – from your drive-in regular deputies, they do not move back and forth between the two groups. No, sir. Okay. The, well, only the one requirement we do have is that they have to have at least three years experience yeah. before they can apply for an SRO position. So, they were yeah. an active deputy, and they've got some, uh, you know, foundation built there. So, but no. Okay. Nate, would they use the okay. summer to do training and uh, mm -hmm. build their skills and, and kind of you work together with the other emergency management systems in, in Berkeley County? Yes, there's a there's a nationally certified course, uh, prevention resource officer course that they go through, and there's also additional grant funded, federally funded uh, training sessions that happen. Nate, the uh, three officers there are funded through what particular financial stream? Uh, this is actually coming from the school board. So kudos to the uh, school board members and President uh, Mr. Murphy for. Um, you know approving these three spots i think it was a unanimous if i remember correctly uh decision there wasn't anybody against it and uh, you know I, I applaud them for doing that 
And do you feel this was a direct result of you kicking the hornet's nest a little bit, or do you think this was coming about anyway? I I think um, that I don't I don't think it was a direct result as much as it was uh, underscoring the message that needed to be sent. We got to stop talking about it and start doing something and keep the ball rolling. I think Dan Comer said it best during the last emergency. Uh, planning committee meeting and he says uh, school safety needs to stay on front stage and remain there aside from all the other things that we have to deal with whether it's special ed and um, you know summer school projects and whatnot uh, the school safety has to stay front stage and and that's what I've been wanting all along and so I think we we have cohesion we have collaboration now and we have and we'll have consistency because at the lepc meeting they actually lepc uh, uh, the local emergency planning committee okay. Okay. it's it's mm-hmm. attended by it's once a month it's attended by stakeholders in emergency preparedness and resources throughout the county like red cross hospice um wv medicine all the law enforcement agencies uh, office of emergency management and those folks uh, 911 dispatch included they uh, actually, I, I brought it to the table in terms of creating a safe schools subcommittee, and uh, they approved it during the last meeting, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that they approved it, so we'll be establishing that, and uh, that, too, will make sure that we continue consistency, and that's in training as well, and making sure we're addressing and prioritizing the things that need prioritized. Now, is this an annual carve-out from the uh, school board budget nate or after one year are you expected to start to share costs on this annually uh i would venture to say it'll be a little bit of both we they approved sixty thousand dollars uh worth of salary and we've already had pre-existing per per person per person so 180 Um, total yeah so we've already had an mou in a in 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 place with the sros we have now this is only an addition to that so um but I understand that we're we're not getting any smaller. Uh, we can't expect the school to keep up with the growth. So, uh, you know, the council in our office, we're all going to have to collaborate together and make sure that we stay ahead of these these things. So it might be a little bit of both. Yeah. And Sheriff, uh, you know, obviously protecting students is of the utmost priority. Um, but, you know, this seems to be a growing problem, you know, where we're seeing – uh, unfortunately, we're seeing you know, violence in, in different areas that you know we have not traditionally maybe seen it as much as we have. I'm not really asking for a prescription, but you know, what do you think it's going to take? Because it feels like it's just an, it's just an arms race of you know we need more funding to be able to have more SROs, and you know I think it's probably the question on a lot of people's minds is how do we start to tamp down some of that? You know, I know. We were talking a little bit about mental health and hygiene and all of that. You know, what what does that what does it look like for you? Well, I think first and foremost, as parents, we need to stop listening to uh, you know all the negativity either uh, either on social media uh, or uh, media in general, and, and just thinking of the worst when we see incidences. As, as much as I think we need to learn from them and get involved in our community in terms of the community event that's coming up May 20th. Citizens can stop in, parents can stop in, talk to law enforcement, ask the necessary questions, show up at the school board meetings, show up at the Berkeley County Council meetings, be there, be involved, be more involved with your community. Here's a disheartening thing that I learned on Thursday. Um, Now, Thursday, what happened on Thursday? uh, Well, we, we we have a proactive uh, protocol in place where we'll intermittently show up at schools, um, two to three deputies in uniform, particularly around the drop off and pick up areas and where the students uh, get dropped off by buses. I was I was saddened uh, by the message that seemed to have echoed in my head when parents were dropping off their kids. I had my hands in my pocket. I'd walk up to the window, say good morning. And what I got was, is there a threat? Is it is mm-hmm. is there something happening right now? If there's something happening, I'm not going to drop off my child. And I get it. I, I, I as a parent, I would completely feel the same way. But to see uniformed law enforcement on school property and that make a parent more fearful, that's the wrong message. So uh, you're going to see a lot more of us a lot more often, and 
at uh, dorm presentations at the school, showing up at parent teachers uh, meetings uh, and advocating school safety and letting the parents know we got this together. Great point. Hey, uh, I want to read a couple of comments here, Nate, in regards to our conversation. As you know, we do have members of the school board who listen regularly. Jackie Long is the vice president of the board. Uh, Berkeley County Schools has not worked out the details of the SROs and which school they will be assigned to and which agency they will come from. And then uh, Damon Wright replied, it's my understanding we just set aside the money. For me, training of the officers is key as working in schools versus the community is different. Your thoughts on those comments there, Nate? Yeah, so that's, uh, you know, whatever wrinkles need to be ironed through. Uh, I'm, I'm very uh, pleased to hear that uh, the topic was broached and, and approved. Uh, and bottom line is, whether it's two or three, I'm, I'm glad that that happened. Mm -hmm. And um, again, uh, I applaud them for, for agreeing to that. Uh, trust me, I'll put them to use. They will be put to good use um, and uh, immediately put in the training. But those comments to me, Rob, implied that the school board felt they were still going to be involved, such as placement and the like. Shouldn't that be the sheriff's responsibility? The school board gives money, and the sheriff takes care of the training, the deployment, the scheduling, and the like. I won't disagree with the school board. I mean, I, th I think what reverberated in terms of after the approval of funding was that they wanted them at a middle school. Okay, I don't have a problem with that. There has to be a home base, um, uh, but they will float. I've never hidden that, um, and I will make sure that they make their rounds at several other schools, um, but there will be a home base. But I guess my point was uh, it's your job to implement and to run the program. Yes, sir. And not, and the school board's job is to make the funds available to you. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think they also use um, state troopers um, as resource officers in, uh, in in other areas too. So I think that's what they were kind of referring okay. to, Bill. Is, is where, who, why? I mean, obviously the sheriff needs to be involved. But I will say this: I don't have to be as politically correct as as Nate was. I think this is a direct result of the conversation that we had a few weeks ago because I know I had a really productive meeting with, with the superintendent. I know uh, Eddie Gokenauer had a really good meeting with, with the emergency. Uh, and this kind of came out of nowhere. Um, and I applaud the board for, for making this yeah, I decision. Think I think it's our job as legislators to now take this to the next level and maybe provide some more. It's also the county's job to, to take this to the next level and, and let us get to that 16 to 20 number yeah. that we really, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. Nate can confirm yeah. it, you know, that would change the game, I believe. You mentioned Eddie Gokenhauer in the county's role, and I applaud, <coughs> and we've as a, on the program have applauded Eddie mm -hmm. two or three times. Will Eddie's group, communication group, continue to stay, be, be active and to pull the group together and talk through major issues? Yeah, and that was the whole spirit behind the subcommittee is to get the stakeholders at the table. I'm talking about your Joe Burton's director of maintenance. Yeah. I'm talking about um, grants, uh, Tracy Gilliams and from the county grant department. I'm talking about your Dan Comers, the safety director, uh, your Dr. Branches, the deputy superintendent. Uh, all these folks here at the table. And, and I'm a big advocate of having an educator there because a lot of what I've echoed has come from those ground troops, the, the educators, uh, the teachers, the uh, principals or assistant principals. You know, this is not information that I've, I've conjured up. This is, I go to a school to do a threat assessment. I'm doing two more today at a private school in another church. But when I go there, they've, we have conversations. And, and so this information comes from them. And I wanna make sure that, that the educators understand that, that I will help in any way possible to, to uh, better the safety for our kids and get them uh, anything that they need and working with the school board and the school administration. But um, my ears open. Well, Nate, I had a, a good. I no, so I, I was actually going to switch topics. I mean, if you wanted to. Yeah, we'd stand there just for one more yeah. second there. I had a neighbor who uh, was a SRO in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. And uh, it struck me uh, when I would talk to him, if I would bring up a name of a teacher or coach or athlete that I knew at that school, he knew the person. And he, he could tell me things about that person. And we had a playoff game at their school. It was Damascus High School. 
and the students around there, the teachers around there, everybody knew him, and they seemed to all have a very good relationship. Uh, talk to me about the difference in training for an SRO versus a typical sheriff's deputy. Well, the SROs get uh, what's called mental health first aid, and that goes deep. That, that's a deeper dive into bullying um, and, and isolation, not only even at the school, but at the home too, domestic situations, how to read uh, mannerisms and behavior because 80% of communication is nonverbal. They get trained to identify these things, talk to these kids, socialize with the kids, regardless of the grade. Uh, we, we just entered into a partnership with Handle with Care, uh, um, uh, Marjorie uh, uh, Lynch and, and that initiative where we're going to start certifying uh, the SROs and others in the LEAD program, which is Law Enforcement Against Drugs and Violence, and enter these schools so these kids can see, as long as we're constantly educating them, our SROs are equipped with annual training, but we're constantly putting our SROs in front of these kids so they can talk to little Jimmy, his third fight in, and be able to uh, identify these issues earlier so they don't have this boiling point and something worse happens, and, and be able to uh, point them in the in right direction. Berkeley County is so rich in resources, and, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're definitely not afraid to take the state's money either. So. <laughs> That's right. They're almost like a, a school relationship officer. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, the the SROs yeah. I've talked to, they, they have to build those relationships with the kids mm -hmm. and the teachers and build that trust. And they get creative. I think Deputy Strickler showed up in an elf outfit and a gun belt. Um, during the Christmas holiday, sometimes uh, uh, she's uh, she's done really, really well in her position. Uh, Deputy Keller up at Spring Mills has done an awesome job. I hear nothing but good things, and it's because these these SROs interact. They're socially uh, social professionals in terms of, of just talking with these kids and not just staying in an office and walking around the outside perimeter. And they actually establish these relationships, and that's you need that mm -hmm. because they can come to them. Anish. Yeah. And well, I just wanted to zoom out, you know, from the schools a little bit and just think about Berkeley County as a whole. Um, and, you know, we, we I feel like we talk about this all the time. Yes, we're rapidly growing. You know, we have new residents every day. Um, what are some of the issues that, that you're seeing from the, the sheriff's department um, as far as that that growth? And um, what, what do you see the need for more in our community at this point? Well, the huge biggest need is mental health. I mean, so I call it I call it the westerly effect. Is you know you got folks from D.C. and other areas east of us that move west that come here and commute back to D.C. or whatnot. There's certain resources that maybe they have that we don't, as you know, sometimes rural West Virginia is considered. But uh, again, Berkeley County is rich with resources. That's the, one of the reasons why we're having the May 20th Community Event Day, is so our resources can talk to each other and network with. With each other and citizens know what actually exists in this county so mental health uh, and uh, again depending on the audience whether it's the uh, you know kids in school whether it's your young adolescent adults uh, to to your older adults you know the identifying and focusing on the issue we've got Veterans Center uh, here just there at the Berkeley Jefferson County line in Kearneysville um, you know some of those vets don't leave they come from all parts of the United States they come here for for treatment and they want to they stay so you know where's our veterans assistance in terms of mental health VA's got awesome resources mm -hmm. but how do we complement those uh, and and communicate between resources with that so I, I'd say mental health in general uh, and you and I had this discussion before we got on uh, on air, uh, Sheriff. Uh, mental health is a phenomenally broad, broad area. I have trouble getting my arms around what we mean by mental health. It could be all things to all people. Of course, we cannot afford that. That's unreasonable. When we talk about mental health, there has to be some limitations, some focus to it. What would be your, how do you define mental health with some focus and some achievability? Well, um, I think uh, as you've seen across the nation, I think one thing that reverberates or at least echoes in my mind on a daily basis with our deputies and what they experience is uh, conflict resolution. As an individual, if I'm presented with a problem, um, I, I don't need to take out a gun, shoot, and then ask questions later. Um, so we definitely have to have uh, uh, resources or at least uh, be educated to have the tools to be able to deconflict those, those troublesome situations. Uh, 
loss of a sibling. You know, I've, I know people have uh, dived into substance abuse simply because they lost their husband or their spouse or, or their brother or their sister. You know, how do we as individuals um, take care of those issues when we don't have um, our friends around and we're at our house by ourselves or or we're, we're at a get together and someone brings up something that sparks or triggers that uh, well, let's call it PTSD yeah. but uh, addressing issues like that so the biggest topic in terms of mental health or mental uh, health first aid is uh, conflict resolution yeah I mean we see that in, in every uh, facet of healthcare now I mean we're, it's, we're seeing a rise of patients that come in that have you know, we could just call it um, some kind of baggage from the last three years of just let's just say isolation you know they haven't um, really been out and about, you know, maybe you know, that's taking a toll on their mental health. Um, the number one thing that, that we're trying to teach too is conflict resolution, de-escalation, um, you know, trauma-informed care, just, you know, not trying to assume why someone's acting some way, but just trying to walk them back from wherever they are. So I think that's awesome that, uh, you know, that, that you all are working towards that as well but yeah. I, th I think it's here so here for this for everybody across yeah. the board so in, in my trainings and my experience and everything there's three things uh that is very easy to see if we're friends you and i are friends and we see and, and we're talking about fishing and you know we've known each other for a couple of years we're at the workplace but all of a sudden i see uh spurts of spontaneous irritability mm -hmm. outbursts of anger and isolation from you uh, we don't talk as much anymore. I call you up for a fishing trip. You yell at me because I interrupted something. Those are red flags. Mm -hmm. Those are red flags we need to pay attention to. And as individuals, we need to we need to invest in our, our relationships and not say, well, this, that's your problem. I don't have to deal with it and wash your hands of it and move on. Uh, we, are we talking about Bill here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, really he, has, he has not invited me fishing for a while. <laughs> yeah, I, thought, I thought we were talking about Mike Hite during the Friday show. <laughs> you catch all my fish. My. Yeah, but going back to the point you made uh, with uh, Valley Health and the point you're making, Sheriff, if you see some of these indicators, mm -hmm. What do you do? What What do you do in Valley Health? Do you have a a place you you send these folks mm -hmm. to? What do you do, Sheriff? If you see something. Uh, this is my question. How do we 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 can recognize a problem? What is our solution to? It? Oh, obviously being a friend mm -hmm. right, and being there for that person. And then once things get a little bit too heavy, what are the resources that our human uh, HR? Uh, at the workplace or in the school system what are those resources that are there yeah. find out is there anonymous reporting that we could do if we see some major issues especially if someone's talking about just you know who's never owned a firearm before but you you now you're talking about purchasing one mm -hmm. but i'm still seeing those three signs uh outbursts of aggression you know uh, angrily you know spontaneous statements and then of course isolation i'm coupling all that together and then you know i'm, I'm going to report that so knowing where your resources are and, and and instead of turning a blind eye to it saying it's not my problem so mm -hmm. reporting reporting but that starts to to me creep into red flag law kind of yeah, yeah. scenarios there nate and this is a state that has been very resistant to anything even approaching a conversation about a red flag law. Now, i'm 100 percent against red flag laws any red flag laws what i'm talking about is personable responsibility to take care of our friends or co-workers utilizing the internal resources but to do that i might have to report something to you as an officer of the law or human or human resources yeah uh no i'm not talking we're not at that level yet we're not at that level but you can um, get to that level you could quick yeah you could you could and and the, the the point of what i'm trying to say is we got initiatives of see something say something see mm -hmm. something send something hr has the uh, uh resources in terms of counseling mm -hmm. services those services need to be identified and utilized instead of us turning a blind eye to these uh, red flag signs of, of mental health issues, mm -hmm. not red flag laws. Yeah. Get we, them the help earlier. Be preventable. I think we can all agree with that. Yeah, yeah we, we can, but we can agree with this six years or so ago as well. We were. This is something we're right. all I very think conscious we have a, of. We have a lot but more resources now. 
We well, this is what I'm getting at, but I still have not heard a good well, reason. What are the resources? Where do we go? Well, I mean, we we partner a lot with Eastridge, and I, you know, I certainly would love to name drop them because they have a crisis uh, management team who we can call at the clinic and say, you know, maybe in conjunction with law enforcement. And every time I've had to call law enforcement. I give them a scoop. Hey, this person's, you know, going through the situation. I'm not really trying to get this person, you know, hemmed up or anything. I just would like somebody to, you know, just just assess their their mental fitness and, you know, just make sure that they're okay in conjunction with our partners at Eastridge who I have a, a great resource named Sandy uh, there who if I call her, you know, she's come into our clinic within the hour and she's she really says it's 24 hours a day where she's willing to come out you know, assess that patient. And if they need to get into somewhere, then she can help get them there. I, so. I can appreciate that. And East Ridge has been doing a great job. They've been doing it the last 25, 30 years. So they're not the new guy on the block. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm getting at is we're dealing up with more and more pressure. What I'm hearing from the sheriff, what I'm hearing from Anish, what I've heard from Mike is we've got all these abundance new resources. What are they? What, how are well, we got the Berkeley County um, uh, Crisis Center. I think uh, uh, the, you know Kevin used to be in that position yeah. back in the day. I don't know the new person because I haven't used them. Mm -hmm. But there are a plethora of resources, and you you get it from like my, my kids. Okay. My kids have those uh, access to those through their school. We have access as parents through through that. Um, I've got grown children and young children. We have a, a, a son who is going through some issues. Um, and we have used a lot of the resources. They are available mm -hmm. if you look for them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and That's the key. And, 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 and maybe it's and, not and where out to, there. And where to go look at yeah. it. I, for but, example, because I'm not any children, I, yeah. I'm not involved with this, I have no idea where to go. Mm -hmm. Are we doing a good job in learning people? Where to, where to go? You say you go to a friend. Uh, that's kind of uneven. Some friends will give you very good advice. Other friends will say, well, we'll, we'll solve the problem the old-fashioned way. Well, have you ever picked up the phone called DHHR as an yeah, individual yeah, yeah, responsible? Yeah. So have you put forth that? It's no – Mike hit the nail on the head. Yeah. It's, it's no different than when I walk into a council meeting and I see nobody. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about something, some important yeah. topic or, or meeting or, or whatnot. Uh, I think another meeting coming up about water uh, this mm -hmm. this Thursday at seven or six in the evening. Um, being involved, and I'm talking about before you cross the line of of committing a domestic issue, before you cross the line diving into substance abuse or active drug abuse. Yes, those things. What laws we have in place right now is fine. They should re they should remain. No no additional laws. All right, we've got that uh, side taken care of. Now what we really just need to do is focus on the preventable side of it and get people more involved. Mm -hmm. and, sure. uh, so go ahead. I was going to say, you know, you know people will go to the urgent care. They'll go to the emergency room. Once and once they get to that point, we usually have the resources to get them plugged in to where they need to go. Then it's on the responsibility of the individual if they have the mental capacity to be able to understand what's being told to them. In those cases that it's not, then we try to find a family member. We try to find um, you know, someone yeah. from you know, crisis management that can help talk and, to that person. And so. I'm going to escalate this up one step. And we have been phenomenally lucky. Uh, and I think that's the operative word, lucky, in West Virginia. We've not had any mass shootings. Every time we've had a mass shooting, the fallback position is <clears throat> mental health, mental health. We have a mental health problem. It's getting kind of old hearing that same scenario each time, mental health, and not to doing anything other than falling, hiding behind this this, this sapling tree called mental health. I couldn't agree with you more. I, I said uh, this a few times on this show. 83% uh, of all the situations across the nation from the Secret Service study that's been done from 1999 till now has shown that 83% of those instances someone has observed concerning behavior before the incident. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, and we we agree with that, um, but I'm going to – that's the easy part. That's the easy part of, of identifying what might have been. That's all in hindsight. My question is, in, in, in looking ahead, and it's awful easy in hindsight to say that person – posted or this person did something they, else they, they've reached out in some way for help 
before an incident happens. So I mm -hmm. think we passed a law this this uh, this last session where it's really simple, but it, it's a crisis 800 suicide line that's on their ID for, for uh, in in schools or um, in, in colleges. Little things like this can really start to identify an issue. Okay. And I think those are the things where you see something on Facebook or you see something on social media or you see some bullying going, these are the things we need to, we need to address. Mm -hmm. Like, we need to address them I, I, before. I, I yield to that. You say yeah. we passed a law. We did. I, I've, I track probably more than most what goes on in Charleston. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about, Mike. So we, we did. We passed But my, uh, my point is but probably nobody else really knows what well, you're every talking about. Well, every college and kid and student will because it's okay. on their ID. Okay. So, um you, we might not be touting it from the top of the mountain saying, hey, this is what we're, but it, it's the physical work that's being done. These are the, the things that the, that the uh, mental health professionals are telling us. If we get to, and let's be honest, most of the, these incidences are younger folks. If we get to them before they are in crisis mode, then maybe we can help. Yeah. Nate, final word is yours. Hey, we're all in this together. Um, you know, I I'm uh, I advocate for every parent out there, every educator out there. Embrace your local resources. Utilize your local resources. Show up at these meetings. Um, we're, we're as far as the, the public safety department, we're going to be out there uh, educating uh, the public on firearm safety and handling on emergency preparedness. Um, be there. Show up. Show up May twentieth. Identify the resources in this county and be safe. Will you have the additional three SROs by the start of the school, uh, new school year? If, if everything goes as planned, yes. Thanks for coming in, Nate. Appreciate Thank it. You. In studio with the Admiral, Bill Stubblefield. Good morning, Rob. Good information from, from the Sheriff. Don yeah. Anish Sampali. I haven't I, called you that in a while. I know. It's been a while. I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah. So I, I almost forgot to respond to it. I thought you were talking about Mike, actually. <laughs> so. It used to be that nobody made a move in yeah. Berkeley County Democratic politics without talking to Don at East Poly first. That's Corey Roman, right? That's, yeah. yeah. No, Corey's not there. No, yeah, Corey's chair. not there either. Okay. No. Yeah. So, no, Tammy Yoffit is the chair okay. yep. of Berkeley yep. County now. Gotcha. Uh, Delegate Mike Hornby hanging out uh, in the second segment here because he's about to get grilled by Anise Sampali. The toughest questions ever Love coming it. his way. Uh, interim session in Huntington, and you were at Marshall University a bit, and you showed me some interesting figures about what's going on with enrollment there. You know, uh, we I'm all, obviously I'm on the education committee. We had a presentation from the president of Marshall University, and uh you know, he goes through the numbers. He, he's a very, very sharp, intelligent man, and I think he's looking forward. And I, I think one of the slides that he showed me was just eye-opening. Um, you know, we're going to see a decline in students across the nation. There's mm -hmm. like 15% after the baby boomers. We're just having less kids, apparently. But, uh, you know, Marshall University down 21% in enrollment. Uh, kids 12 percent down and actually wanting to attend college because they, they they find it's not affordable they can't mm -hmm. even if they do they're in debt and they're not getting that job that they want they find it's a lot easier to take courses in tech and then go out and get a job in that course that they're doing and they can make great money mm -hmm. so that was really eye-opening for me to, to think that four-year colleges across the board are really seeing this huge decline um and he is pivoting uh, he, he kind of mentioned southern new hampshire new university was the same size as um as marshall about a couple of years ago they both had about fourteen thousand students uh southern new hampshire university now has 175,000 students um they shifted to an online platform mm -hmm. um marshall's down to 11 or just over ten thousand. um but the way they shift and the way they changed their classes is kind of how they went uh, because employers aren't really looking at what school you went to. They're mm -hmm. looking at the skill set that you're having. So um, that was shocking. And then when I asked, uh, well, someone, I didn't ask, somebody else asked, if uh, they lowered their tuition based on online, you know, he was like, well, that doesn't really help. We, we still have the same costs. So um, there were some things there that were very troubling to me. I was like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think with, like, the democratized, democratization of information where people can go online and like you said taking courses and employers are looking for like you said 
personality skill set. Well, yeah. Not, they don't care if you went to Harvard they don't or Yale. Care. Or, yeah. And, and you maybe know. with the big degrees, the doctors, the sure, lawyers, sure. Uh, you know, those are still yeah. traditional. But um, he also he also mentioned AI and Chat mm-hmm. GPT. And it was funny. We were talking at lunch. Kind of, and a server came over. He went. He's a student at. I won't mention his name. He was a student at Marshall. And he says, "I haven't written my own English paper since I've been here." Yeah, and a- AI and Chat, Chat GPT has done all of his English papers right. since, yeah. since he's been in college. And I think you know, I'm I'm still a huge proponent in higher education. Of course, <laughs> you know, I think it's very important. But I but I think it's part of the realities of the situation that we see. I, I didn't even think about the generational you know, numbers and the shift and right. just how many kids are around nowadays. But also, you, you know, just I have so many friends that have made career switches and they've done that by just going online, taking some six month course that allows them to get into software or uh, computer science. And kids, kids are learning yeah. from YouTube more than they're learning from actual school books. YouTube yeah. is the number one learning tool. Yeah, I'm in not. The world. I'm not a carpenter or a or a uh, what or do you a call plumber it? or anything but, like that. But, but I you can just learn did it. my basement, yeah. so you know, it's it, it's it, pretty amazing yeah. what you can learn online. Yeah, um, and, and that's the future of, of of where we're at. And I just it, it was truly eye opening for yeah. me. Bill, you look like you're disturbed by something. Well, I'm. Yeah, I'm. Um, um, I guess I'm surprised much anything. I don't. I, I know West Virginia University has seen a decrease in enrollment. I don't believe Shepherd has. I think Shepherd's been pretty much uh, maintained their enrollment. Not sure about. Not certain about that, Mike. Right. That's my sense. Yeah, I, I. I was told that it, it's across the board, and and oh, these numbers are yeah. are. Uh, eye-opening to everybody and like some of the bigger schools maybe not but mm-hmm. wv is down about the same yeah i think so yeah. uh, it may be the trend uh, there yeah. may be exceptions as exceptions as well uh yeah you, you there's a lot we can do uh via remote uh there's a lot of stuff that you benefit from being on campus the maturation process but i'm but i yield to the fact the same same thing is not applicable to everybody. Each student is looking for something different, and but what we do have today are options. And I think an option is uh, it, we see it at Blue Ridge. Pete Chekovich has been very attuned trying to orient the program to the students' needs. Are they preparing to go to a four-year school? He provides that. Are they preparing to go to a certain industry? He has partnerships with electrical company. He has partnerships with PG&G. And I think, I think that's what we're talking yeah. about. I think yeah. you're going to see the, the four years change to mm-hmm. be kind of yeah. more community-based. Yeah. They're, they're targeting the specific jobs that we're looking If you look at cybersecurity right now, it has a 0% unemployment mm-hmm. rate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty impressive. Well, you know what you said about you know partnering with employers. I think that's that is the value in education. T- to your earlier point about you know can they get a job after they're done with a four year college degree? Well, if they don't have anyone essentially lobbying for them mm-hmm. from the school side of things, then what's the? I mean, th- it's hard to find a job on your own when you're. You know, you're not sure where to look. You're 22 years old. You know, you don't really have the resources or, or, or I guess, a network to re- reach out to people that might be, yeah. you know, and, hiring. And, the, and so the students are going for other positions. The, the normal degrees are in steep decline, mm-hmm. and they're just going for the smaller, more dedicated, focused um uh, courses and, and degrees. Well, the a lot of the degrees in steep decline at the uh, baccalaureate level. Uh, they prepare you for the more specialty. The uh, the course that you have in, at the master's and the PhD level are generally not in steep decline. Yeah, I would agree yeah. with you. It, it, you know, the, the the larger people that are prepared to go to to, to school for six years and do that. But you look at you know you look at teachers. Uh, we, we're graduating. A couple of hundred, I think, seven seven hundred teachers out of WVU, mm-hmm. down from like eleven thousand. <laughs> but now that, that's a yeah. different story altogether. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's something that deserves a lot of attention. Why are we having fewer and fewer te- uh, end of, uh, students going into teaching? And I think you look around the way the teachers get abused verbally and in some cases well, physically. I mean, I, Why it, would anybody? It's a math problem too. Time. Why would I go one hundred thousand dollars in debt to yeah, be yeah. paid thirty thousand yeah, dollars for the first sure. year, forty yeah. that whatever it is? Let's yeah. say it's fifty. I, you know, it, it students are attuned to what's going on, and they try they're trying to find the easiest, quickest way to get to yeah. working in a field they're interested in and 
with technology, we have you can make a lot of money um, in the technology sector mm -hmm. without having to go to work or yeah. actually show up at a job. Sure. So, so what is Marshall University doing? You know, what are these four-year so, colleges so doing? So they're uh, they're they're adjusting the total way. That, I mean, it was he he made a really good point. He is trying to make within the next seven to ten years, I believe, is is the number that Marshall University, every student will come out debt free, which is pretty impressive. They've already raised 165 million for their uh, foundation to, in order to do that. Their goal is 300 million. Um, it, it, the way they've pivoted, they've moved in, they're, they're opening a new cybersecurity facility that is gonna be in tune with something like what, what DC has so that um, th they're pivoting their classes in the way they're working with WVU. So WVU is doing you know, well at these courses, Marshall's going to take on these courses. Mm -hmm. So they're not, they're not trying to compete within the state for the same kids. They're going to attach or attract different, different career paths. Um, and I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, he's pretty forward linked looking and I thought yeah. that was pretty yeah. cool. When you first started this, Mike, I, I had anticipated you taking a different tack. Uh, you said that the students would come out debt free. That could be done a couple of different ways. I thought you were going to talk about uh, reduced tuition, reduced expense on campus, but <laughs> what you're talking about is a foundation that will actually provide them a source of money. Yes, I think that's their that was their goal. And again, I'm not, I'm not saying I agree with it or I disagree with it. I'm just saying that was his vision um, of how they how they can attract more students. Because obviously, if they they're down twenty percent, twenty percent, twenty percent, I'm going to have a university here soon. Right. Um, so they are they are at the forefront of, of figuring this situation out. And I think. Um, but Again, he's in a un, he's in a unique position to do this because he's he knows the industry. He made a lot of money in he the sure industry. Did. He's viewed as one of the real innovators in industry. So he's bringing those talents uh, to the university. Truly impressive man. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think you know. I always think about India and uh, just where my family's from and how schools set up there. That you kind of dive right into your, you know, if you want to be a doctor, you start working towards that as soon as you're done with what we call high school yeah. here. You know, you're, you're jumping. So after two years, you, know, you can actually practice medicine because it's such an accelerated, but you know, very, very challenging. Instead two years. of the general courses that we do sure. for the first two years, because it's party time. And and, and I don't. I, I I say that. <laughs> Well, I love those courses. I think yeah. it developed me into a well-rounded human being. I think it, you know, my love for philosophy and debate right. and all these different things came from, you know, those years that I had, you know, got to learn all these different things that, that I probably wouldn't have studied had I had I had the choice. But I think there should be that choice, yeah. you know, for those who are just strictly interested in getting into what it is that their field is going to be after school. Right. Uh, you know, what's the point of spending an extra two years, perhaps, if you can get out there and you can be a productive person in society, you know, help contribute to the economy. I think that's, you know, that's an overarching, you know, from a macroscopic uh, level of things. So I me just say that in regards to college costs, uh, since 1990, college costs have risen 130 percent above the inflation rate. OK, that's an average of nine percent inflation per year for college costs during the course of those 30 years that have just gone by. If enrollment is down at colleges across the country, it's because the colleges did this to themselves. If you want to adjust for population Wait, and all, all those not, factors. Wages have not followed there, that. <laughs> there, there is nothing else, mm -hmm. inflation-wise, that has risen 9% every year on average since 1990 besides tuition costs. Now, if it was just tuition costs, that would be one thing. But there's also room and board. And then there's a thing called fees. Because if you're a state school, you don't have to get permission to raise fees. You have to get permission to raise tuition. If you're a private school, you can do whatever the heck you want. But fees is the next way that they have driven college costs beyond the average person's means. So when you're making a decision as to what you want to do at the age of 18 with your life, and you think to yourself, do I want to go to college? And do I want to walk out of there with at least $100,000 in debt or something close to that? And what am I going to make when I get out of school? 
So, so why are the schools doing this? And the answer is because they can. And why can they? Because the federal government backs their loans. Mm -hmm. There's no risk to the school to give anybody who wants to borrow $120,000 to go to school the $120,000 because the college gets to keep their money no matter what happens. If I default on my loan, the federal government backed it up. They go after me, but the college already has their money. So they don't care. They don't care that they're driving these kids into debt that's equivalent to a mortgage. They don't give a crap. They don't mm -hmm. because they've got their money. And that's all they care about is their money and building their endowments. Billion dollar endowments. What does a billion dollar endowment do? It takes a billion dollars off the street, sticks it in an account so they can parse out the interest and the earnings to somebody, some kid here or there who's attending Harvard or Yale or wherever. They have these gigantic endowments and probably in most cases don't need a whole lot of that money anyway. Mike, it that's feels the so, Rob Rant yeah, I was going to say, it feels, <laughs> feels so good to have a Rob Rant. It's been a long time since we've, been, we've had one. Well done, And Rob. I didn't intend that for us to go down <laughs> no, that no, road. It was, it was good. It's good. But I, I have zero sympathy for any university that's having trouble with money right now yeah. because you milked everybody for 30 years. I'm, mm -hmm. on, I'm on the board of, the, uh, board of Governors for Shepherd, and we look long and hard before we raise in t tuition or fees and uh, and I'm not sure the others do as much so but at least in the community college you you do it with great reluctance and we because we're trying to protect the students as much as you can I find the 130 uh, percent to be very surprising uh, and I don't know what it is because I it has not gone to the teacher salaries they are still uh, uh, they're well paid, but they're not exorbitantly well paid. Uh, Brooks and Mortar own a certain amount. Research programs, they get the bulk of the research through agencies such as National Science Foundation or NIH and the like. Uh, I'd be curious to see how that 130% is actually dissected. I don't doubt it. i just would like to see how that, that's broken up. And then shifting gears. Um, oh, we, we, in, in, in the education thing, I... I I do think we have a serious issue um, in West Virginia, especially in Berkeley County. Um, and there has there was some nice talks that were happening regarding some of these uh, the 140 day limit um, on retired teachers and substitutes um, working, bus driving, things like that, and why they get penalized uh, and why they have to quit after 140 days. So I think we're going to make some progress. This was initially that. instituted so people weren't double dipping on pensions, Mike. Yeah, it. it, it they, they were paying in, but they were get they were getting the double dip. So I I think what's what's happened and what we've seen is everybody that that has a pension is either quitting or stopping work in February March when they hit that 140 days, and then we have a shortage again. So mm -hmm. we we've got a critical need. We need to f address that. There is a way that we can say, hey, listen, they're not going to pay into it again, but they're not going to lose their pension. It's not going to come out of their pension. So. Uh, there's some creative thought in, on that, and I am working really hard with the Education Committee to get that done. And I think we, we've got to work with the Retirement Board and Pension Board at the same time. And, you know, there, there's two, two separate committees there. So um, it's a little more difficult than I thought it was. And I thought um, that was pretty interesting um, that, that we had those conversations behind closed doors. Yeah. Mike, what's the focus or how how is the legislature going to drive uh, if they are, you know, teacher salaries, maybe locally here uh, this next session? I mean, it, was there any traction this year? Um, you, you know, I mean, we, we did, we've given raises to same employees the last few years every mm -hmm. time. Five percent. I don't know how much traction there is to go, OK, we're going to attack teacher salaries i think there is some traction to go we need to look at the school aid formula because something you know, i had a really really productive meeting with with, with um, superintendent stevens some that school aid formula is based on something 40 years ago mm -hmm. and, and the landscape of schools has changed so whether we're saying you know this is the the amount of money you have to spend on teachers this is the amount of money you have to spend on bus drivers you know that's changed. We've got a lot more aides. We've got a lot more other people in in the in in the school system other than just teachers. So we may be funding all these teachers, and that's why we're so short. But we have needs in other areas. So sure. I think I think sure. there's ways to do it, and it's just the tip of the iceberg that we're we're kind of. 
peeling yeah. back here. And I think I I should have I shouldn't have misspoke, but I think yeah. teachers for me is a catch all of yeah. you know all of those people. And so um, educators, educators, yes. yep. And so I think you know I know this has been talked about many times, and I, I truly have not been following the legislature as close as I have been in the past. You know, locality pay. Is there any kind of is there any kind of traction on that end of things? Because I think that you know when you're talking about a five percent raise across the board across the state, you know that's a lot of money. It and uh, you know, obviously, the cost of living in Mercer County is different than the cost of living in Berkeley County. But you know, has there been any thoughts? There's on been that? there's been lots of thoughts. Thoughts, I'm there's sure. Lots of um, thoughts. Lots of uh, yeah. Lots of way to go. To where the the bottom line is we're short seven or eight votes right now. Yeah. We are, we will continue to work. Your local legislators are working hard. We are trying, uh, building relationships, trying to figure out other ways. There are things um, we're working on. But when it comes to education and, and things like that, um, you know, we're, we're working through it, mm-hmm. you know, I think. And it's a process. Did yeah. you get a chance to observe any of the meetings in regards to the prisons, Mike, and the situation? The no, I, no, I didn't. Um, I think it's come... It, it, we're we're going to be called back in special. We have to do something. We have fifty four percent vacant, fifty six percent of the vacancy rate. Yeah, fifty four um, in Berkeley County or Martin Luther the ERJ. Yeah, I wasn't uh, I wasn't present for any of those committee meetings. I would, you know, I'm not on that committee. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't hear a lot of chatter um, about that. Um, my small business bill did come up in economic development, though. That was pretty cool. Any what, progress? What uh, well, the chair of Senate Finance, Senator Tar, he. he he thought it created an unfair advantage, and the more I thought about it, the more I was like, it does. But and without his support, I'm kind of thinking I need to re, re I need to retool this thing, and then because your, I, orig- your original bill called for what? Called for a, a small business payroll tax for the payroll tax that the business pays for the first five employees if you have less tax credit. Fee. Tax credit. Um, finance likes it on the house side. We've gotten it worked pretty well, but without the support on the senate side so i'm thinking i need to do something on a on a larger scale for all small businesses but cap it at a certain dollar amount so it's not exorbitant so it might have to be reworked but that's that's i I like the feedback from all the other um the joint was kind of cool it's just i don't want to spin my wheels and and go after this thing if i don't if the senate the chair Mm -hmm. of the senate finance is not a fan it's not going anywhere. It's the same mm-hmm. as if the, the, the chair of the finance on, on those sides not a fan. you got to retool it. Uh, and I'm not really hard-headed, and I'm going to stick to my guns. I, I've got to rework it and figure out how to make this work. So All right, back to the drawing board. You want to hang out with us or you got to go? i got to run. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Thank you. I'll be seeing you in the building. <laughs> <laughs> not today. Not, never today. <laughs>